Students, if you were to think of a dam that's about to break, and then as a breaking, water rushing, 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 we might get a little bit of the idea of diabetes insipidus. But instead of a dam and water, we're talking about a deluge, a whole massive amount of urine production beyond anything you can almost imagine. We're going to discuss posterior pituitary disorders, namely diabetes insipidus, and this will be our first discussion. Okay. Before we start on this, we need to know a little bit more about the hormone involved. And the hormone involved has two names. The hormone involved has two names. And it also has two purposes. Two names, two purposes. The names are antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, and vasopressin. Vasopressin. Now, what are the two purposes? Well, the purposes are really the keys in the name. So what do we have here? Retain water. That's antidiuretic hormone. The purpose of antidiuretic di hormone is to retain water. Think of your body that you would just about urinate all the fluid if it wasn't for antidiuretic hormone. Also, with the name vasopressin, Vasopressin, vas vaso means blood vessel, pressin, pressure, constrictor, so vasopressin means raise the blood pressure. Now, if you think about that, retaining water, raising the blood pressure, do you think that this would be a great hormone if a patient was in shock? Yes, and it is a great hormone when you're in shock. Okay, now, what we're going to have to understand a little bit with the antidiuretic hormone is the old nephron, the nephron. Remember that uh, it's a million or so uh, nephrons in one kidney and a million or so nephrons in the other kidney. It's a functional unit of the kidney. All right, in the nephron, um, basically you have the uh, Bowman's capsule here, and then you have the uh, proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule, and here's the collecting duct. And this is right the place where the urine is. Right here is where you have the urine. But if I may say, the, there's a problem with the urine here for the most part. Think of that there's a problem with too much water in the urine. You're going to have to concentrate it. You're going to have to concentrate it. Well, how, how does your body concentrate? Well, there's a hormone that helps with concentration called antidiuretic hormone. It makes the cells here more permeable, which allows the water to go from the collecting duct back into the body, back into the body. So basically, um, antidiuretic hormone in this case is causing us to retain the necessary fluids, to retain the necessary fluids. Without it, we would urinate an incredible, incredible amount of urine. Now, something this powerful has to come under control, intelligent control, and that's where the hypothalamus comes in. The hypothalamus has within it osmoreceptors, osmoreceptors. In other words, it has sensors that are going to be monitoring something called osmolality. Osmolality. Okay, so the hypothalamus, as the blood goes through it, will be measuring the concentration of the blood or the osmolality. Let me get this picture here and take a look, take a look back here. Okay, you got urine, urine osmolality and the blood osmolality. Let me give you a, a real quick head start here. The osmolality between both should be equal. You know, like in IV fluids, isotonic equal. Okay. Now, uh, arbitrary number, give or take, is about 280 MOSM. That's a way of measuring, let's say, the osmolality of the urine and the blood. Let's say normally in this patient it's 280. Okay. Now take a look here. Here's supposed to be a urinal, and you see the particles of the osmolality. And here you take a look at the same patient's blood. And what do you notice? It should be balanced or what? Equal. And put a little equal sign. Now, that's if everything is working properly. That's if everything's working properly. However, in diabetes insipidus, in diabetes insipidus, there's either an inadequate secretion of antidiuretic hormone, or you make enough of the antidiuretic hormone, but there's no response to it. And that's what we have in the case over here. In other words, plenty of ADH hormone in order to cause the reabsorption of water, but the cells are not responding to the antidiuretic hormone. Hmm, that's not good. Okay, and then what happens is the water is not retained and you would say that the patient's left to urinate freely. It's almost, you might think of like a, a garden hose on full blast and 
You were holding, then you let it go, and you know how it flies all around there? Patient's going to urinate an incredible amount. The least amount would be four, four liters a day, four liter or 4,000 milliliters a day. And that's a lot of urine, considering that the normal might be 1,200 to 1,500. All right, and it may go up much further than that, greater than 6,000, and even then some. All right, now there's three types of diabetes insipidus. There are three types of diabetes insipidus. You need to know each one. We'll take the simplest and the, probably the least common, dipsogenic. Dipsogenic basically means that the patient has so much thirst that they drink a lot of water, ends up um, diluting it, and um, uh, it, it dissorbs the mechanism of the ADH, and there you go. And usually it's psych, a psych cause. That's dipsogenic. All right, now the two that I really want you to focus on, on one is nephrogenic. And by just the word nephrogenic, what we're saying here is gen genesis means that's where it starts. Nephro is in the nephron, or that's the place where the problem is. Well, what happens to the nephron? The nephron does not respond to antidiuretic hormone. See, ADH action blocked or it's ineffective. Plenty of hormone, but it's not responding. Plenty of urine then. Couple medications you need to know, particularly lithium, which is a very common medication for bi bipolar disease. Um, lithium, and then you also have demaclocycline or declomycin. Lithium and declomycin are medications that may cause what? Nephrogenic um, diabetes insipidus. Another thing that may occur is neurogenic. Neurogenic means the origin's somewhere in the head, if you will, and maybe they had cranial surgery or, or trauma, and what's going to happen here is a decreased production or secretion of what? Antidiuretic hormone. Now, the pathophysiology of this, we we'll have to look at uh, what's going to be going wrong. First, massive diuresis, fluid loss freely. Massive fluid loss, which will mean that the plasma, if you lose fluid in the urine, the plasma will become thicker or increase osmolality. I put a number 300, okay? But the urine, since there's so much flu water in it, it's going to be very thin or it has a, what, decreased osmolality. And I put an arbitrary number of, what, 100. And you notice a mismatch. Remember over here, what did we have? Equal. Here it's not equal. Thin urine, concentrated blood. What will happen? The patient will go into a comp compensatory mode the hypothalamus will know that uh, the blood is, has a high osmolality and will trigger the thirst mechanism, but that's not going to help the situation. The thirst will be unable to really compensate. Uh, decreased level of consciousness, hypovolemia, decreased blood pressure, electrolyte imbalance. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Electrolyte imbalance, that'll affect the nodal rhythm. Remember the SA node, AV node, uh, Purkinje fibers and all that stuff? Well... Cardiac, that's dependent on electrolytes. Cardiac dysrhythmias can occur. We're in some bad shape there. Now, lastly, what are the three major signs and symptoms of EI? What are the three major? Well, thirst. And look at, this guy has a bunch of glasses there. Massive diuresis. We use the arbitrary number of 4,000. And then now, you got to stop for a moment and think about dehydration. They'll be hypotensive, decreased blood pressure, tachycardic, they'll have dizziness, weakness, and decreased skin turgor. So what are the three? Thirst, massive diuresis, and what? Dehydration. And uh, there you have it for what? Diabetes insipidus. The three types, neurogenic, nephrogenic, dipsogenic. All right. Thank you very much for listening.